Hey everyone, it's Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about music mixing, really mixing, but more specifically music mixing inside of our Media Composer timeline. We're actually going to take the next three lessons to talk about different techniques that you're going to be able to use inside of Media Composer to really mix music, it could be sound effects, really anything you want, because the techniques that we're gonna learn in this episode can really be applied to any type of mixing that you're gonna be doing inside of your Media Composer timeline. Now, as always, before we get rolling, I wanna give a big shout out to Video Guys, our sponsor. Don't forget, if you're looking for Media Composer subscription licenses, head on down to the show notes below for the links. You can head on over to Video Guys website, get that coupon code of MC101 to get 5% off your subscription license. And as always, I want to remind you that if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one Media Composer training, you can always send me an email at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. All of the lessons are recorded for you to save for your future reference. And I always give discounts if you want to get in and do multiple lessons to get you up to speed on whatever project you happen to be working on. And last but certainly not least, I want to remind you that if you find this tutorial useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media to help us get the word out there about Media Composer. To all those editors in Premiere or in Resolve who maybe need to jump into Media Composer and get a project done, or maybe you've just been away from Media Composer for a while and you just want to freshen up on, on some great tips and tricks, hopefully everybody can get something, whether it's a lot or even just that one little tidbit out of every lesson that we put up on the YouTube channel. All right, so as you can see, we are inside of Avid Media Composer, and I have an interstitial edit that I have put together here with some footage from our good friends at CineStudy. And as I said in the intro, we're going to spend the next few lessons talking about doing basic music mixes inside of our timeline. Now, the music mix concept is going to work the same throughout your entire mix, but I figured this is a very good one to start with, only because it's basically a talking head interview with a few B-roll shots in here. And this is something we may have put together for social media, for a YouTube channel or Instagram or something like that. And now what we want to do is just get in, add some music, give it a good, quick, simple mix, and then get this uh, timeline out the door. Now, before we get rolling with it, I do want to draw your attention to the fact that our audio is mono. Now, before I do that, there's something important that I do want to mention. You'll notice that as I'm dragging through, my audio scrub is turned on. Now, this will not be turned on by default for you, but it is an important thing to understand. How do you turn on audio scrubbing? Now, in the default Media Composer layout, I do not believe audio scrub is included as a shortcut. I do believe you have to actually add it as a keyboard shortcut or as a composer shortcut. So of course that does beg the question, where do you find it? So if you take a look at my composer window, you'll notice right here it is actually activated. You'll notice that if I come over here and I hover over it, you'll see toggle digital audio scrub is set to F2. And as I drag through, you'll see, there it is. If I turn it off, that will of course disappear. And if you do not have it mapped to your keyboard, do not worry about it. What you can simply do is press Command or Control and 3 on the keyboard to call up your command palette, head to the Play section. You'll see it right over here, Toggle Digital Audio Scrub. Again, you can map it to the keyboard, you can map it to the, co the Composer window, whatever works for you. Now, what I did want to show you with that, I'm just going to come back and hit play As here, filmmaker, is the fact that the, with the, the way that my audio configuration is laid out, you'll see that I actually audio. have, and it's a little bit hard to see with this VU meter here, so what I'm going to do is just hit Command or Control and 1 on the keyboard to call up the audio tool, just so you can see it a little bit better here. Sitting in a dark you'll notice that I have one channel of audio coming out of the left images. track because in my dual mono setup, you'll see that I have the audio sitting on the A1 or the left channel. Now what we want to do before we get too far into this is that I want to actually get in and adjust this. Now before I do, it's important for us to talk about leveling and where we sort of want to do our mixes to. Now for broadcast television, we're sort of aiming for about a minus 10 dB mix. 
Now, keep in mind, your audio might go a little bit above that, your audio might go a little bit below that, but on average, that is kind of what we're looking for, minus 10. Now, keep in mind that if you're doing mixes for the web, you're gonna wanna have your audio a little bit higher, maybe mixed to around minus five or minus four. Again, I always encourage everybody to check the specs of where you are delivering to. It will just make your life so much easier in the end. Now, I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna hit play. You'll notice it's incredibly that our audio is actually doing pretty good. It's actually already up, pretty much peaking, an probably at about minus nine actually. And what Sitting I want to do now room. is I'd like to come in and make this track mono. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F3 on the keyboard. I'm just going to bring this up a little bit here. And the reason that I'm doing this, I'm just going to hit play here. As an indie Perfect. filmmaker, it's We can actually see the audio the levels there. Now, you'll see why I wanted to see that in just a second. All right. What I'm going to do is inside of my audio mixer, I'm going to hold Alt or Option. You'll remember we talked about this in a previous lesson, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on my panner up here at the top of the track, and by holding Option or Alt on the keyboard, it immediately pans that track to the middle. Perfect, exactly what we wanted. However, take a look at what happens now when I go back and hit play. As an indie filmmaker, it's You'll notice rare now I don't see that audio track peaking up above audience. where I had sort of put my little cutoff in here because Again, you'll remember in a previous lesson, we talked about the fact that when you mono a track, what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring its levels down 3 dB. So we always want to compensate for that by basically adding 3 dB back in. So now you'll see if I come back and hit play. As an indie filmmaker, there's my it's audio levels back rare to get pretty the much where they should be. Screen your film. Right. Now, instead of me going through each clip, and making that adjustment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark an endpoint right here on my first clip. I'm going to come down to the end. I'm going to mark an out point here. And what I'm going to do is park myself on that first clip. I'm going to navigate to the fast menu. And what I'm going to do is set not only the clip's gain, which is 3 dB, on the track from the in point to the out point, but what I'm also going to do is I'm going to set that pan on the track into out as well. So now you'll see that if I come back and I hit Maker, play, it's incredibly rare to get the opportunity. Very nice, but we already knew that for that track or that Rangers clip. Watching the there story we go unfold with the for that next clip and every other the... clip down the timeline. All right. So let's now bring our music track in the Media Composer. So to do that, very simple: Option or Alt on the keyboard. We're going to grab that clip. We're going to drag it in. Very nice. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna select that clip and I'm going to navigate to clip to consolidate transcode. And we're gonna consolidate that clip onto one of my external hard drives. And what we're gonna do is simply double click on that clip. I'm gonna come down to about here, I'm gonna hit play. Oh, that's very loud, very, very, very loud. That's, to be honest, it's too loud, all right? So what exactly is going on here? Well. What is important to keep in mind is that with stock music like this, or even music that you pull off a CD, the levels have been normalized to that of a CD. All right? So it's basically up just slightly below zero. Okay, so we're obviously not getting any distortion. But what's important to keep in mind is that any clip that you're gonna bring in that's going to be a music track or a sound effect track, chances are is going to basically be that and I use loud in air quotes all right now here's a great quick tip for you when bringing in sound effects or bringing in music what I'm gonna do again is I'm just gonna hit F3 on the keyboard I'm just gonna drag down my timeline here I kind of gave it away there if you were watching quickly but you'll notice here again I have one track of audio and I have one fader however if I navigate over to that audio clip that I have sitting in the preview window You'll notice as soon as I clicked on it and started dragging, I now have two audio tracks appearing over here in the mixer, meaning that the faders that I'm seeing actually represent the clip that I just brought in. So if I was to gang these two tracks together, meaning what I do to one, I do to the other, and I came in here and punched in a value of minus 10, what I'm now gonna have is I'm gonna have that music now sitting basically at minus 10. Now, do I still have my audio tool open? I don't, so let's open that, but you can see it right there. All right. 
So this is a great little quick tip for you. So this way you're not dropping clips in your timeline going, oh wait, it's too loud. I gotta go to the mixer. I gotta bring it to minus 10. I'll put, put another clip and do that. You can actually go in and set all of those clips before you even get in and start working with them. This way it's just gonna save you headaches down the line. What I'm gonna do is just close the mixer and I'm gonna close the audio tool. And now let's talk about dropping this clip into our timeline, all right? So first thing I should probably do is just remove that in and out point, which is great. And keep in mind, because I'm working in a dual mono, uh, basically all odd channels represent left, all even channels represent right, what you're gonna wanna make sure of is that when you're gonna drop your music in, just so that you can keep track of everything, don't just add one new audio track by pressing Command or Control and U. In this case, what I wanna make sure of is that the audio tracks that I'm going to be dropping the A1 and A2 onto are their own left track and right track. Now, because I have auto patching turned on, it's actually turned on by default, you'll see that if I deselect audio track one, it automatically goes down to the next available track, which is audio track three, and I can turn it off here for A2, and it's automatically gonna jump down to A4, which is super handy. Now, because I brought this clip in before, you'll see that it actually has an in point already set for it. So all I'm gonna do is just come back, I'm gonna mark the entire timeline, and I'm gonna hit B to drop that clip in. Now, there's really no point in going in and turning on our audio waveforms, because keep in mind, the waveforms represent what the clip looked like before we made any modifications to it. So if I turn on my audio waveforms, you'll see that the audio, the basically the waveforms are just completely full because keep in mind that audio is sort of peaking at just below zero. All right, so I don't need it. So I'm just gonna turn it off. Now, remember, we set this to minus 10. So this is actually a good place to start. I'm just gonna turn it down just so that it's not so loud for me here to hear. There we go, all right. So what I'm gonna do is just come back and I'm just going to call up my audio tool because normally when I do mixing, I have my audio tool visible. And I'm just gonna hit play. Very nice. And what's gonna happen is when we get to the first bit of dialogue, we're gonna to wanna to dip that, that to audio maker. down. It's incredibly rare to get the opportunity to... Because as you can hear, the music and our dialogue are really fighting with each other. So what I wanna do is just dip that audio down underneath our talent talking and then when he's done talking, I'm gonna bring it back up and sort of up and down, kind of like waves on the ocean, all right? Now in this lesson, I'm gonna show you one technique to do it, and in the next couple lessons, I'm gonna show you different ways that you can do the same technique. Of course, that does beg the question, which one is the best one to use? The best one to use is whichever one you are most comfortable with, all right? So we're gonna use another command in this lesson to do our first dip. And I'm gonna use one of my favorite shortcuts in Media Composer, one I use all the time. I have it mapped to F6, and that is the Add Edit command. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add an edit basically right where our talent starts to speak. Now, some editors will say they want it a few frames earlier. Some might say right on that edit point is fine. I'm gonna put it right on the edit point because for me, that's sort of how I've always done it. And I'm gonna do the same thing right where he stops speaking as well. So right there. So basically two edit points. Now, one thing I wanna draw your attention to here is these little icons, the two little dashes, what do they represent? These represent what's called a through edit or a match frame edit. What it's basically telling you, what Media Composer is telling you is that this frame right here at the edit and the frame before it are sequential in time code, okay? Now I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna make an audio adjustment. Let's make an adjustment, let's make a fairly drastic one. Let's go to like minus 20, all right? Now, I should undo that because I should have had both my tracks gang together so that it did, what it did to one, it does to both. There we go, very nice. Now you'll notice that as soon as I made that adjustment, the through edit icon is still there, but it's turned red, meaning still a through edit, but something has changed in this clip, which of course obviously is the volume of the clip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and hit play again and hear the audio change. As an indie filmmaker, it's incredibly rare to get the opportunity to... Now for me personally, I still find that to be a little bit loud. Maybe we'll make it somewhere around minus 24. All right, let's come back and listen again. 
As an indie filmmaker, it's incredibly rare to get the opportunity to that I find your film much better live with an audience. All right, very nice. Okay, now we've made that first edit, and what we could do is we could come in now and add our actual dip, which we're going to do with a simple dissolve. All I'm going to do is call up our dissolve. I'm just going to say add. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to add another one. And now when we listen to it. As an indie filmmaker, it's incredibly just rare like to waves get the on the ocean. To and we're going to hear it come back up here with an audience. Very nice. Now, if we were doing this one by one, this is how we would do it. But obviously we don't want to do it like that. We want to be much more efficient. We always want to work smarter as opposed to working harder. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo what I just did here. There we go. Very nice. I'll just redo that edit here. Let's redo the add edit. Perfect. And we have our levels at minus 24. Nice. Okay. So because I'm happy with the way that that now sounds, and I know that all of our audio is pretty much level throughout the rest of this as far as the dialogue goes, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and we're just going to add some edits in here. All right. And we're going to make that adjustment to the parts that we know need adjusting by simply coming through, coming to our audio mixer, punching in minus 24, minus 24, and two more here, minus 24 and minus 24. All right, perfect. Okay. Now I could come in and add a dissolve, add a dissolve, add a dissolve. But again, we work smarter. We don't work harder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark an in point here and I'm going to mark an out point there. And what I'm going to do is come back to that first edit point. I'm going to hit the add quick transition shortcut, which on your keyboard by default is the backslash key. So remember that as we move forward, you'll notice that I have it set to 12. But if you take a look down here, it's only impacting that one edit. What I would like to do is I'd like to apply that to all transitions from the in point to the out point so that when I say go, there they all are. Now, this would normally be the end of the tutorial. However, there's a little bit of a, I call it editor's preference for me when it comes to what I have done here with bringing those dips back up in between having Peter John Ross, who is our talent, when he speaks on camera. It's fine with the first transition here. As an indie but the one thing that I don't normally do is I don't normally bring that audio all the way back up to minus 10 because I find that a little bit Film jarring, especially in short spaces. Audience. Sitting in a okay. dark room. More so down here. And hearing the people around you. An audience. Okay, that's a little bit jarring. For me, normally what I will do is I'll start by splitting the difference. Okay, so for example, this is minus 24, this is minus 10, that's a 14 dB difference. So what I will do is here, I will set this to be about minus 17. Now I think I'm gonna put it at about minus 15. So it's not gonna go all the way back up, but it's gonna go a significant way back up here, but just not all the way back up to minus 10. This way, it's a lot smoother on the ocean for us here. Let's make sure here, hold on, minus 15. There we go, perfect, okay. This way it's a lot smoother on Where our ocean opportunity to as opposed to having big waves film live have a little bump. Audience. Sitting in a dark room Much with nicer. a bunch of strangers watching. Now the only thing I might want to do is minus 12 or 12 D or 12 frames might have been a little bit short for that transition, but this is the beauty part about this workflow. Now you can get in and finesse it a little bit. Does this one need to have a little bit of a longer uh, dip in the audio, a little bit of a shorter dip. This is where you can now get in. Once you've set your baseline, which is what I have done now, now you can get in and easily go through and make all the little minor adjustments you want to make to your audio mix so it sounds exactly the way that you or your client wants it to sound. All right, so I think that's a good place to leave off for this lesson. In our next lesson, I'm going to show you the same technique, but how to do it in a different way by utilizing audio keyframes in your timeline. All right. And as always, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Video Guys. And don't forget that if you found this tutorial useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media. And if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at Gmail. 
www.thinkandgrowthpodcast.com. Thanks a lot for watching.